I never really learned why, but for whatever reason, the town I live in used to be huge on the whole nuclear annihilation scare back during the Cold War. From the stories I heard, there wasn't a day that went by without the kids doing duck and cover drills at school, or the adults acting all depressed like the inevitable was going to creep up on them at any moment. I even had a few people tell me that just about every family had a home bunker that they'd sleep in every night, and that the ones who didn't went crazy from the paranoia. One night, you'd wake up to the sound of your neighbor screaming bloody murder, and by morning there'd be a new house for sale. It's honestly kind of sad to hear just how many people had their lives ruined by the fear of an apocalypse that never came. One of the old mayors thought he'd fix the problem by building a giant air raid tire and smack dab in the center of town. From what I understand, the idea was to try and keep people from thinking about it too much, since that thing had let them know if they were about to die. In all honesty, I thought it was kind of smart at first. That is, until I learned how often they had to test the damn thing. Every. Single. Night. Eight o'clock sharp, its haunting wails would ring out across town, bouncing from building to building and rolling over the countryside for miles. I've heard stories about the first few times it happened, how some people never got the news about the tests and thought the end was upon them. You want to talk about paranoia? Talk to those poor bastards. Thankfully, it didn't take long for people to start getting used to the tests, and eventually it got to the point where they didn't even think anything of them. It kind of just turned into background noise for a lot of people, something they'd suffer through for a couple minutes and then never think about again. Now, while that part might not sound so bad, there is one tiny issue. The tests never stopped. I've lived here for almost a year now, and every night I heard that damn siren go off like a bomb in the center of town. They've tried to warn me when I moved in, but I didn't have a damn clue how bad it really was. I live out in the woods a good few miles from the center of town, kind of tucked away from the rest of civilization, but there's still a few folks around. Even with that distance, though, you can still hear it loud and clear as a shotgun blast in your living room. Nobody I've talked to knows why the damn thing is still standing, let alone being tested. Apparently, the mayor came out at some point and said the testing had been fully automated years ago, and that at this point it'd be too expensive to unplug everything and dismantle the tower itself. Horseshit. That's coming from the same guy who blows the infrastructure budget on round-the-clock private security in a town with a crime rate hovering above zero. Hell, he barely even leaves his house from what I hear, and even when he does, he never wanders farther in the center of town. Barely pays any attention to anything beyond that. And once you start getting into the woods, you might as well call yourself COVID, because he avoids this place like the damn plague. Hasn't once hosted a single event within a mile of the tree line, and he does everything in his power to make sure nobody else does either. Good thing, too. Because if I ever caught that bastard driving by here, I'd give him a hefty piece to my fucking mind for not scrapping that hell tower. My old office chair creaked beneath me as I leaned back and let out a soft, drawn-out sigh. I haven't lost track of time what felt like hours ago. I started rubbing the computer fatigue out of my eyes before begrudgingly looking over at the clock on the far wall. 7.59. Great. Another joyous night of being delicately serenaded by the soothing melody of that damn siren. A half-hearted swear slipped out from under my lips as my tired eyes followed the second-hand tick its way across the clock's face. Thankful that I lived on my own so no one could hear what I said. I dreaded every second as the arrow marched closer and closer to the sound I'd put up with so many times, hating the mayor with every fiber of my being for not taking care of that damn thing. But then, just as the clock was about to strike eight, the room was plunged into darkness as every light in the house went out all at once, leaving me surrounded by nothing but inky blackness. The humming of appliances cut out just as suddenly, leaving only the faint buzzing of insects outside to fill the empty void surrounding me. It looks like the power's out, I mumbled under my breath, growing more and more bitter by the second, thinking about how if the mayor had just diverted some funds away from his private security detail, he could have fixed the power grid and stopped stuff like this from happening. My mood did start to brighten as I realized what all this meant, though. I listened carefully and, to my complete and absolute delight, couldn't hear anything aside from the usual sounds of nature. The clock had definitely ticked over by this point, and yet, that fucking siren was nowhere to be heard. I felt a smile creep its way across my face as I peeled myself off my chair, taking a moment to stretch and relish in the silence of the night for the first time and, well, since I moved here. After a few minutes, I figured I might as well use the opportunity to go to bed early for once. I had used to fall asleep right around now, but the siren had a special way of throwing off my internal clock, 
so my sleep schedule has been pretty much devastated for the past year. Who knows, maybe this will be the push I need to finally work on it, I thought as I slouched my way over to the bathroom. I staggered out of the living room and into the hallway, passing by the window and taking a second to admire the dark, vacant street in front of me. A thick wall of trees hugged either side of the road and stretched out as far as the eye could see, everywhere except my front lawn and my neighbors right across from mine. The branches above made a canopy that blocked out the sky, not letting a single splash of moonlight through. You couldn't even see more than a few feet past the tree line how thick the brush was, meaning it was nothing but darkness in every direction. Usually the street lights would at least keep a few sections of the road lit up, but now with the power outage we didn't even have that. I took in the beauty of it all, admiring how pretty this place was without the artificial light. Until I noticed something off in the back corner of my neighbor's yard. I could hardly even tell if there was actually anything there at first, or if it was just a speck of dust in my window with how far it was tucked into the shadows at the edge of his property. I tried rubbing my eyes to see if it would go away, and yet it didn't. It was real tiny though, and so faint I had to squint as best I could just to barely make anything out. All it looked like was these two super dim pinpricks of light. Just as I figured that out though, some random car went racing by all of a sudden and distracted my gaze for a moment. When it disappeared, I looked back to where I had been looking earlier, but whatever I had just seen was... gone. Confused and still not able to find whatever it was I had seen, eventually I just gave up and stepped into the bathroom. With how focused I had been on what I was seeing though, I hadn't even noticed that the usual sound of wind, bugs... Anything else for that matter had slowly faded away. I fiddled with the light switch a bit to see if the lights were working again, but no luck. A little annoyed, I walked over to the mirror and flung the cabinet door open. While I was brushing, I started thinking about what it might have been that I had seen out the window. I remembered talking to my neighbor this one time, real nice guy by the way, I think his name was John or something, told me about this big black dog that kept sneaking onto his land late at night. Said he'd wake up sometimes and hear it rummaging through his trash looking for a quick snack. Worst part was, sometimes he'd look out his window and the thing would just be standing there staring back at him. I remember him saying something about how it probably lived in the pig-ass family manor down the street and how he wanted to go check, though I don't think he ever followed through with it. Hell if I'm gonna blame him. The place has been abandoned for like half a decade and with how run down it's gotten, I wouldn't want to spend any time there either. As I turned back towards the hallway, I figured I'd probably just caught a glimpse of that dog trying to sneak onto his land again, and that the car must have spooked it off. I thought about maybe telling him in the morning, but kept bouncing back and forth on the idea, so I figured I'd let that be a morning decision. Just as I stepped foot into the hallway, however, I froze stiff in my tracks as I heard a blood-curdling scream ring out through the quiet night air. I scrambled over to the window as fast as I could, holding myself up on the windowsill as I scanned the pitch black tree line looking for where it had come from. My eyes flicked over to John's living room straight out across the road, squinting to try and make anything out in the darkness. The chill ran up my spine as I saw two faint blobs of light staring back at me. I thought for a second that it was John waving a flashlight around, but nah, that'd be stupid. Why would there be two of them? Even if he was dual-wielding the damn things for some reason, they should have been moving back and forth, or at the very least any direction except straight out at me. Hell wasn't even the worst part though, because the more I kept my eyes locked on those weird splotches of light, not once daring to move my head or even blink, the more I felt like they were looking back, and I almost couldn't look away. I stared at him so long that I started to notice another bit of light, so faint that I had to concentrate as hard as I could just to make it out. It wasn't round like the other two, more of a wire-thin strip running underneath them. The more I looked at it, the more I realized it kind of curved up a little at either end, almost like it was... I jerked myself back from the window, trying to shake the image from my head. When I lifted myself back up and opened my eyes, my suspicions were confirmed. Nothing there. That's how you know you've been too long without good sleep, I thought to myself. Hell, it'd been, what, a year since I had a full eight hours? Christ, I bet that hadn't even been a scream I heard from the bathroom. Probably just a particularly strong gust of wind blowing through the trees or something like that. 
Still, something about it just felt so... real. The more I thought about it, the less I trusted what my own senses were telling me. I knew I wasn't going to be able to go to sleep still thinking about it, so I went back to the living room to pick up my phone. I recoiled a little as I turned it on, having to shield my eyes from the light before I turned the brightness down. I knew John's sleep schedule was just as screwed up as mine, so there wasn't any harm in calling him to see if everything was alright. Still, though, I was a little hesitant as I flipped through my contacts. I paused for a moment before actually pressing the button, but when I did, I was shocked as he picked up almost immediately. Hey, it's your neighbor. Sorry to bother you, but I thought I heard you screaming earlier, so I just wanted to call to make sure you're okay. My voice started trailing off as I realized the only thing coming through from the other end was static. I stood there in the middle of my living room for a few seconds just listening to the white noise playing out of my phone's speaker, thinking that whatever caused the power outage must have taken the cell towers with it. Yeah, that's what it was. The fact that the static was steadily getting louder the longer I held my phone to my ear was probably just the signal trying to fix itself, and the faint hints of whispering I was starting to hear wafting into my ears were probably just my mind playing tricks on me again. I have set my phone back on the table and started shambling my way over to the bedroom. I passed by the window sill again, rubbing my eyes groggily with the palm of my hand as I looked forward to a night of fulfilling, restful sleep. I took a glance out the window as I passed it, just to make sure there wasn't anything there, before turning to look back down the hallway and continuing the half-hearted march forward. The moment I brought my foot down, though, I froze like a deer in headlights before damn near snapping my neck with how fast I looked back out the window. Sure, there wasn't anything there now, but I could have sworn I had just seen those same damn eyes and smiles staring back at me. My eyes scanned the area a hundred times over trying to find any trace of them, but it was like they had just vanished in the thin air. I noticed this one little patch of moonlight on the ground that had managed to snake its way through the leaves, but other than that, it was just trees, underbrush, and darkness. The longer I looked, though, the more I felt a grin creeping its way across my face. God, I'm being stupid, I muttered under my breath. A little power outage and a few bits of light catching my eye, and all of a sudden I'm a paranoid freak. Now I'm imagining emaciated figures, blacker in the night itself, standing in the middle of the road staring at me with soulless white eyes. I let out a little chuckle as I slouched away from the window and, at long last, into my bedroom. I didn't even bother changing my clothes. I just collapsed onto the bed and let its soft embrace sap away whatever life was left in me. I rolled onto my side and looked out the window on the far wall. Still giggling a little at how easily I let myself get spooked sometimes. The night was more still than I remember it ever being. Not a single sound to be heard coming from the outside world. Not even the usual chorus of insects and wind that always kept me awake after the siren died out. I stared out into the forest, fixating on each little splotch of moonlight that managed to slip its way through the thick canopy of leaves overhead, lighting up the maze of tree trunks on either side of the road. God, it felt nice to have a night where I didn't need to worry about that siren. Just me and a dead silent world to fall asleep in. I went to blink, but found myself drifting off the second my eyelids came together. Can't have been more than a couple hours later that I slowly peeled my eyelids apart, staring up at the ceiling as I felt the haze slowly leaving my mind. Fucking... Great, I thought to myself, finally get a night of peace and quiet for some extra sleep and I can't even let myself enjoy it. As I laid there grumbling to myself angrily, however, I realized that the night suddenly wasn't as quiet as I thought. There was a faint scratching noise ringing out across the room, probably that old tree branch on the window again. Still, it was so muted that it took me a few seconds to convince myself that I was even actually hearing it. Feeling more irritated by the second, I rolled over to my left to see what was- JESUS FUCKING CHRIST! I screamed as I practically jumped up from under the covers, never daring to take my eyes off the window as those same glowing white eyes from earlier stared back. 
Every nerve in my body was firing on all cylinders as I saw the same horribly crooked grin from earlier spread beneath them, glowing so intensely that... Wait, no. They weren't glowing at all. They were so brilliantly white that they should have been lighting up my entire room like searchlights, and yet it was still pitch black. I was terrified, shaking like an earthquake, and feeling the adrenaline pouring into my blood, and yet it felt like something was holding me in place. Making things worse was the fact that the longer I looked into those eyes, the more I'd begin to notice everything else around them getting blurrier and blurrier. It was almost like my vision was distorting around this... this... thing. The faint sound of static was only getting louder and louder, my eyes staying locked on even though I felt like I was going to puke if I stared any longer. I could have even sworn that out of the corner of my eye I saw some sort of hand blacker in the night itself slowly reaching out to me from its side of the window. In a burst of effort I had never experienced before in my life, I whipped my head to the side and threw my hand up in front of my face, doing whatever I could to shield my eyes from this thing. I stayed in that position for what felt like minutes. It felt like every muscle in my face was dedicated to keeping my eyes squeezed shut, hoping, no, praying that this thing would just go away like last time. With every ounce of willpower I could scrape together, I painstakingly inched my hand downward and peeled my eyelids apart, ever so slowly turning my head back towards the window. After what felt like full minutes, I forced myself to look out the window and see if it was still there, and... nothing. I sat dumbfounded in that position for what felt like hours, a mix of shock, confusion and relief all washing over me as I kneeled there on my bed trying to figure out what just happened. That swirling mess of emotions eventually culminated in a little chuckle leaving my mouth, which had been hanging open for some time now. That little chuckle soon turned into a giggle, which soon turned into the most side-splitting burst of laughter I had felt in years. I had damn near cried as I collapsed onto my side, absolutely howling as I laughed at how bad I had let things get. I didn't even know if I was just seeing things foggy because I was half awake or if I had somehow come down with sleep paralysis in the past 24 hours, but whatever it was, it was clearly taking its toll on me. As the laughter died down and the tiredness set back in, I could feel my body relaxing a little. Still giggling slightly, I started picking up the blankets from wherever I had thrown them while I was freaking out. How damn am I about to make some poor therapist rich as hell? I joked to nobody. Seeing spooky glowing eyes in the dark like that. I pulled the covers up over my shoulders and rolled onto my back, staring straight up at the ceiling as I nodded off to sleep, not paying any attention to the blistering white eyes staring back down at me, or the crooked grins spread beneath them. As my vision blurred and the static grew louder, I ignored the blacker and night arms reaching down to me drifting off to enjoy some well-deserved sleep. Reports coming live regarding the series of mysterious disappearances that took place following the nearly seven-hour blackout from last night. While authorities still haven't officially released any names to the public, statements from several devastated community members seem to suggest that the majority of those who went missing lived in the outskirts of the city. It is still unconfirmed whether the numerous unconfirmed reports of screaming coming from the woods are related. In other news, the mayor has released an official statement this morning stating that the city's air raid siren was heavily damaged by the power outage and is likely beyond repair. The mayor continued by saying that even if it can be fixed, he sees little reason as to why it should be, seeing as how the nearly 60-year-old siren is, quote, no longer worth the upkeep since the Cold War ended 30 years ago. Well, I for one can't wait to finally get some decent sleep without that thing constantly screaming at me every night.